So let's get some analysis now from the outside advisor to President Trump for judicial nominations. Leonard Leo joins us tonight. Leonard, thanks for being here. Good to be here. First, put this in perspective about how big a deal this opening, not just a opening, this opening is. Sure. Justice Kennedy's been on the courts for over 30 years, and he's played an enormously important role in helping to fashion so many different areas of our jurisprudence, from gun rights to freedom of speech, separation of powers, federalism. It's a big deal. The process. I'm being kind of whispers that the Neil Gorsuch blueprint is basically what is going to move forward. Yes. The president had enormous success in nominating Neil Gorsuch to the court, and I think that's the kind of process that you'll see going forward, another nominee like him. Is the sense, you heard the Senate Majority Leader, that this is going to happen quickly? Is there a timeline on this? Usually it takes the White House about two or three weeks to get a nomination out, and then normally it takes about 70 to 100 days for a Senate to confirm. So the leader's right. You're looking at the fall, and you could have somebody seated just before the beginning of the October term of the court or just after it starts. What about the, the Democrats, including the Senate Minority Leader, who are out there saying this can't happen? It needs to wait till after the election. President appoints justices to the court. Uh, it's one thing to say that, you know, just before a presidential election, we should have a cooling off period. But we have a president. The American people knew he was going to who he was going to nominate because he gave him a list. So we should just move forward. And he's saying that this list is unacceptable. But in reality, because of the vote structure in the Senate, there's really nothing Senate Democrats can do. Is there to stop a nomination from going forward, aside from tripping that person up in a hearing? If the president nominates someone extraordinary, like Neil Gorsuch again, I think it's very hard to stop that kind of a nomination. The American people were widely supportive of Neil Gorsuch, and Justice Gorsuch had bipartisan support in the Senate. Okay, let's talk about a couple of the names that we're hearing about already. John mentioned some of them. Uh, Judge Brett Kavanaugh, D.C. Circuit, uh, U.S. Court of Appeals here in Washington. Very distinguished service on the federal bench, hundreds of opinions published out of the D.C. Circuit. Someone who understands that those limits on government power in our Constitution are inextricably intertwined with the preservation of freedom in our country. Will he have problems with Democrats? Well, as Senator Schumer has said, anyone the president nominates will have problems with Democrats. But ultimately, I think red state Democrats and moderates in the Senate will understand that someone like uh, Brett Kavanaugh or another Neil Gorsuch type nominee would be quite suitable for our country. He was a top official in the George W. Bush White House. Um, yes. Let's talk about Judge Thomas Hardiman, Third Circuit, U.S. Court of Appeals, uh, Chambers in Pittsburgh. Judge Hardiman was someone who the president actually interviewed the first time around. And uh, again, someone who's been on the bench quite a while, very extensive record, seen lots of cases. Someone, again, who understands that it's the job of a judge to interpret the laws it's written. Speaking of those laws, just recently, 5-4 rulings in which Kennedy was in the majority. You have union dues just out today, uh, Trump travel ban, abortion language specifics, Texas redistricting, state sales tax, Ohio uh, voter roll purge, just to name a few recently. But he's been swing vote on a lot of major cases. Uh, is the fear on the left justified that this means that Roe v. Wade is in jeopardy if uh, one of the 25 gets through the process? The left has been using the Roe v. Wade scare tactics since 1982 when Sandra O'Connor was nominated. And over 30 years later, nothing's happened to Roe v. Wade. And the fact of the matter is we know as much about a number of the justices, for example, John Roberts, as we knew about Justice Kennedy was he, when he was nominated. So I think the abortion issue is really very much a, a scare tactic. This is, needs to be about the Constitution more broadly. As you pointed out, Kennedy has been very important in propelling uh, jurisprudence in lots of different areas of the law, and that's what this process should examine. Let's take a listen to uh, Justice Kennedy uh, about the Constitution. It is appropriate to recognize an essential truth. And that is that the Constitution of the United States is the single fact, the single reality, the single idea, the single moral principle that sets the United States apart from other nations now and throughout history. I shall honor the Constitution. 
nominated in 1988 by President Reagan. Uh, Justice Kennedy made this decision, went and talked to President Trump. Do you know anything about those conversations? I understand that it was a very cordial conversation. The president was very impressed with him, his graciousness, the 30 years plus of service he had on the court. You know, the Trumps and the Kennedys as, a fa as families have known each other over the years on and off, so I think it was very gracious for the justice to go to the White House and talk directly to the president. Talk about names? Uh, I don't know if they did, but um, Justice Kennedy is a very prudent and discreet man, so I suspect that um, you know, he understands the role that he plays and the role the president plays. Do you think this will have an effect politically, and not where you are, you're looking at, at the justices and, and who's going to be nominated, the judges, uh, but as you look at the political landscape, that this could have a big impact? Oh, any, any vacancy on the court does. The court these days makes so many important decisions that affect American life that it, it, it ought to be an important part of the political process. People ought to think seriously about who they want on the court, and I do suspect it'll have some impact in the uh, Senate election process. In 2016, uh, all voters, conservatives, and independents ranked it pretty high uh, for the reason that they chose to vote. The way as, they as they should, as they should. Leonard Leo, we'd uh, love to have you back as this process gets gets moving. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Brad.